My brother Bill, 30 male, has been trying online dating for three years but with no success. We live in a mostly rural area so there aren't many single women around his age to begin with. The ones who are available, well, Bill didn't think they were good enough. He asked me to edit his Hinge profile so he could attract a mate. I looked it over and, damn, his profile has paragraphs of what he wants in a woman. Skinny, cute, under 30, average to high income and needs to live locally. She must be into anime and gaming. The only pictures he's got are grainy selfies or pictures with one or both parents. Mostly our mom. Bill lives with our parents and has been working as a door greeter at Walmart since he was 18. I told Bill that he doesn't need to overhaul his page, he needs to overhaul his life. No woman meeting his wants would want to date an obese 30-year-old living off his parents and working a Walmart job normally given to older adults to stay busy. Bill freaked out on me and told our mom. She's upset because I tried to tear him down when he needed my help. She wants me to apologize, but what's there to apologize? I just told Bill what was wrong and that he should consider changing his life if he really wants what he wants. Am I the idiot? I was supposed to be helping my brother and instead tore him down. Hello, yes, I would like to order. One hot sugar mama, younger than me and lives in my rural area. She must like anime and overweight man boys and not judge me for my job or living status. She should be able to do everything, cook for me, clean up after me and not have male friends or colleagues. I will offer nothing in return. I hope this is an acceptable compromise. What a catch indeed. And he doesn't need to overhaul his page. He needs to overhaul his life is what more people need someone to say to them. I can't believe he has photos of his parents on his dating profile. That would be a nope for me. Dear God, he sounds like an incel in the making. I mean, you were harsh as heck. None of it is untrue, though. He seems to be asking for a lot with not very much to give in return. Personally, I would probably have chosen not to respond rather than say all of that, even though it's true. Can't judge you the idiot, though. He asked for your help and you gave him the truth. In the making, dude's fully cooked at 30 years old. If he was a steak, he'd be well done. You are not the idiot. What on earth were you supposed to do? Your mother has a very positive view of him, so she'd be the best person to help him with his profile. The fact that he ran straight to Mommy and that Mommy now wants you to apologize is exactly how and why Bill is in this position. He needs therapy and a life coach, but my guess is he can't be bothered. Imagine being 30 and not just being able to tell your sibling you didn't like what they were saying. Instead, you need Mommy to do a power play because sister hurt my fifis. He's deluded and it needed saying. Just reading this, his attitude toward women made my skin crawl. His list is not okay coming from anyone. Ask him if he was athletic with a good job and if he would date an obese woman making minimum wage and living with her parents, lol. In fact, he wouldn't date the female version of himself now. He'd be lucky to get any female version at this point. His mother is the perfect person to overhaul his profile. They're both as delusional as the other. I have in-laws who are exactly the same and they don't want actual help. They just want you to tell them they're right. Let them tell each other that everyone else has the problem. OP surely has better things to do with their time, like watching the bees pollinate flowers in a park far, far away from the family. I've, male 32, been with my girlfriend, 29, for over a year now. She's smart, funny, a bit quirky and has a serious job with a good salary. We have a great time together and generally get along very well. The only thing is that her home decor choice is bizarre, to put it frankly, and not something you think a normal grown adult would be into. Her apartment is definitely a reflection of herself and her interests. Not in the best way, though. My girlfriend has a wall dedicated to animation in one room of her apartment, like Futurama pieces and etchings of some weird triangle guy. Then there's the wall of framed preserved insects in another room, but not insects like butterflies or moths. Instead, she displays tarantulas, beetles and large stick insects. Her bathroom has a subtle theme of the ocean, pretty common, but instead of starfish or shells, she has a little anglerfish nightlight, a small vampiric squid painting and then a framed diagram of what apparently is a goblin shark right by the toilet. A majority of her home decor and furnishings are okay, the apartment itself is very modern and sleek. It's just the random decor and juvenile-ish themes, like cartoons, insects and bizarre ocean creatures, are off-putting. This is where I might be the idiot. I avoid bringing people over to her place, especially people from my job, because of how juvenile it looks. Everyone's impressed when they see the high-rise, but that quickly fades once you enter. 
The one time I brought a work colleague over, they ended up telling me after that they found her insect wall terrifying. I work in finance and appearances and first impressions are important. My office will hold casual gatherings when we get together for a few drinks and good food and we rotate hosts. And this time, it's my turn. The problem is my place is under some construction and not an ideal place to be right now, so I've been staying with my girlfriend. My girlfriend suggested that we host my colleagues here since she has the space and thinks it'll be fun. I told her I planned on skipping my rotation and seeing if the next person would be okay with hosting early. She kept pressing on why I didn't want them over here, so I finally said it was because her home decor was strange and not something a grown woman would have, and also that her insect wall horrified the one colleague that did come over. My girlfriend got mad and said at the end of the day it's not my space and these things bring her joy. She also said that she is indeed an adult woman, which is exactly why her apartment is decorated in such a manner. I love my girlfriend, I do, and it's okay to have different interests. But what does an adult really need to decorate with them besides a few things here and there? I mean, my own mother asked if my girlfriend was autistic after she saw the entire apartment for the first time. So, am I the idiot for telling my girlfriend her home decor is why I won't host a work gathering at her place? Info, what age children usually have preserved tarantulas and vampire squids as home decor? I think those might be expensive decorations for children to find. Also, Futurama wasn't a kid's show. She's not childish, you just don't like her. She deserves someone more interesting and interested in her rather than shallow appearances and finance. You are the idiot, so you don't like her interests. You don't have to be judgmental about it. Your one and only experience bringing someone over, they were terrified of the insect display. So this one person and your own distaste have convinced you that everyone would be terrified? You don't need to bring your work colleagues over, but if you yourself look down on your girlfriend because of her interests and how she chooses to decorate, maybe you shouldn't be with her. Honestly, OP sounds like the only childish one here. Personally, I'm not too fond of live creepy crawlies, but that's because I don't want them on me. Creepy crawly exhibits of live or dead ones when they're behind glass, endlessly fascinating. They are amazing creatures and deserve to be liked and loved. I just don't want them crawling next to my skin. Her apartment sounds amazing. I'd love to look around it and engage her in the conversation. Your girlfriend sounds cool. What's she doing with a finance bro? Having second thoughts? OP, if you're so embarrassed by her, why are you with her? Do you see yourself in her life with her in the future? Yeah, no, you don't really love her. If you did, you would rejoice in these fantastic examples of her quirkiness. She sounds great. Break up with her and let her find someone who will cherish her awesomeness, as you're too embarrassed by her passion. So my husband works crazy hours. He's gone six days a week, basically all day. I'm a stay-at-home mom, going to school online and doing freelance work from home. I get zero breaks. And on his one day off each week, he wants to do stuff as a family, so I still don't get a break. Anyway, his work schedule changed, so he's going in an hour later but has to stay an hour later. I thought it was great so we could spend some time with our child in the morning, and maybe I could get an uninterrupted shower. Well, on the first day of the new schedule, I woke up and he was already gone. So I called him and he was at the gym. And I explained it would be nice if he let me know he'd be going instead of just assuming. Also, we have weights in a whole gym area in our basement, my gift to him, and so I genuinely don't see why he has to go to the gym. I didn't even know he had a membership until now. Then he explained that he was going to use his extra time in the morning now to go to the gym before work. So, instead of me getting any break, my days are now two hours longer, because he gets up at 6 to go to the gym, then gets home at 9pm. I also expressed that I think it's highly unfair that I cannot do things for my self-care without a babysitter that I end up paying for, and that's if you consider going to the dentist and doctor to be self-care. Anyway, am I the idiot for not being okay with this and standing my ground? He said he's still going to go and that he can't do all the workouts he needs from our basement. Not the idiot. So you have a full-time job with no days off, being a stay-at-home mom six days a week as a single parent in practice. Plus, a part-time paid job from home. Plus, school. Have you considered adding up the hours you do and showing your husband? Leaving him at home to do your job for a few weeks. Seriously, go away and leave him to do it. Pointing out medical appointments come before the gym. Going to add two hours a day, five days a week at the gym is excessive and unnecessary, especially when you take it out of someone's time and well-being. I think that your hubby is avoiding home and the children. And we have a winner. 
This guy just does not want to be a dad at all, so he has a family he's not actually interested in. Please tell him he will have to work more hours and forget about the gym, as he will need more money for child support payments. Agree. Honey, you're drowning. You need to clarify to him that this deeply affects your happiness and mental and physical health. Tell him the marriage cannot survive if you're drowning this much and that you love him but this is putting a strain on your marriage. Additionally, from a divorce gal who went through the same, just so you know, you get way more breaks when you're divorced. It's great. Kid-free weekends to do whatever you want are so relaxing. So definitely evaluate whether this stress is really worth it. If I was choosing a marriage like that versus divorce, I could tell you from the other side, definitely divorce. That marriage sounds exhausting. I'm a single mom to Juliana, teen. I work nights and get home at 8am. When I get home, I'm not driving my kid around to go see her friends, I'm sleeping. When she was younger, we had no pair for this kind of thing. Over the past year, we've had an agreement that she can go wherever she wants after I get home, as long as she can get there on foot or on her bike and she stays in our town. This agreement works because she's been able to prove that I can trust her over the years. I also have a tracker on her phone that alerts me when she leaves town. My sister asked me to babysit her kids, a teen female and a tween male last weekend, while they went to a wedding. I warned them that I'd be working those days and wouldn't be taking their kids anywhere until at least 4pm and that I wouldn't let them go into town. They seemed fine with that until Saturday morning. I came home from work, made me and the kids breakfast, and Juliana left the house. My niece asked why Juliana gets to go out and they don't, and I said it's because she's been able to prove that I can trust her and I have the tracker on her phone. They're not with me long enough for me to be able to trust them to wander around town, and since I don't own their phones, I can't put trackers on them. The kids woke me up multiple times that day to take them places because they were bored. Then their parents started calling me because I can't let my daughter go out and not my nieces and nephews. And I should have called in sick if I couldn't let my niece or nephew do anything fun because of my work. Sunday was the same. I didn't take them out either day because if they didn't respect me, I wouldn't take them out, which their parents also got mad about. My sister and parents are upset that I locked the kids in the house all weekend but let Juliana do whatever she wanted. They're saying to be fair I should have let all of the kids go out or none and are calling me a bad aunt. Am I the idiot for letting my daughter go out and not them? Not the idiot. Their parents should have arranged activities for the kids and transportation if they were worried about it. You were clear and they accepted it. You've already inconvenienced yourself by babysitting for the weekend. Now they expect even more? Nah. Something I'm also baffled about at their ages. Are you telling me those kids couldn't work out how to entertain themselves for a few days? Don't most kids grow out of the I'm bored and it's your job to fix it phase by the time they're 9 or 10? They're old enough to read a book, watch a movie on an iPad or play board games. My mom had similar rules to me as a teenager. I could go where I wanted, when I wanted, as long as I told her about it and kept on top of my other responsibilities, like school. My older brother would complain, saying it wasn't fair since she didn't do that with him, but his grades sucked and he snuck out all the time to drink with friends. The most rebellious thing I did as a teen was driving my friend to McDonald's for chicken nuggets at 3am because she was too high to drive. In other words, I was trustworthy and he wasn't. OP, you did your sister a favour. They knew the rules. She would have complained more if something happened to her kids if you let them rove around free range. No good D goes unpunished. I have an autistic son, Tween, who doesn't like fizzy drinks. He's also not a massive fan of milk or juice, so he drinks water. I went out to eat with my grandfather, kiddo's great-grandfather. We ordered and my boy got some burgers and fries, typical kid stuff. The order came with a kid's soda and my son decided to get water. For some reason, my grandfather took this as an insult and seemed like he was poor or it went to it's included in the meal so he had to get it, so we ordered a Coke. My son had no intention of drinking it and he just got it to shut my grandpa up. He got a refill on his water and my grandpa lost it. Started yelling at my son about wasting money and destroying Father's Day because he won't drink a damn Coke. I don't know how this is viewed as disrespectful, even though the family knows he's autistic and has some food and drink aversions. I grabbed my kids and left the restaurant after my grandfather wouldn't let up about the coke. I got a text from my mom, it's her dad, later because my son and I ruined Father's Day for my grandpa and he's so rarely in town. I don't even understand this because my mom is normally so good with my kids and she's taking my grandfather's side in this argument. 
Not the idiot. Grandpa ruined Father's Day by making something out of nothing. No one assumes a family is poor because one kid drinks water. It's normal, and a grown adult shouldn't be freaking out. Your kid is totally within their rights to not drink the cola, and you're within your rights for not forcing him to drink it either. To be precise, Grandpa made a wine out of water. It would be one thing if your kid insisted on having an expensive drink and then poured it down the drain, although publicly yelling would still not be an acceptable way to handle it. Still, your grandfather is the one who insisted it was a free drink. All your son did was literally get a refill of a different complimentary beverage. Good Lord, people flip out on kids for drinking too much soda. Then we get a situation like this where a kid doesn't want soda and still gets flipped out on. It baffles me and makes me wonder if your mom knows the whole story. Also, are you sure that your grandfather is doing okay? Angry outbursts could be a sign of something more seriously wrong, like the early stages of dementia. Good for you for sticking up for your son and showing him you have his back.